Hey everyone, welcome to my pre-write of MCU Spider-Man 5. I hope you liked the video, and if you want more content like this, then consider subscribing to my channel. If you still haven't watched my previous pre-write for Spider-Man 4, then the link is in the description box below, in the upper right corner, or in the comment section. With that said, let's continue with my pre-write of Marvel Studios, Spider-Man Breaking Point. We open with the airplane scene from the blast film, but from a different point of view. Electro disguises himself as one of the crew and sneaks into the plane. He kills two men in suits that were guarding a metal briefcase. Electro grabs the briefcase and proceeds to go to the pilot's cockpit. Let the fun begin. Electro says to himself as he kills the pilots and his eyes glow. We got to a POV shot of one of the passengers. Everyone seems calm at first, but suddenly, we hear a jolt of electricity hitting one of the wings outside. Everyone panics, but the flight attendants try to assure calmness to everyone on board. But then, another jolt of lightning seemed to have hit the plane. The flight attendants rush in to check if anyone was injured, only to discover the pilots dead. Everyone panics in fear, but suddenly, Spider-Man swoops in to save the day. The rest of the scene happens as it did in the last film but from the perspective of one of the passengers. Later, the plane crashes to the ground and Spider-Man's web gusher. The people on the plane and outside cheer for the heroes who saved the day. We evacuate and leave the plane, and as we do so, we look up and catch a glimpse of Spider-Man swinging away. Suddenly, we start to have scenes flashing before our eyes, as if they were from a dream or a distant memory. We shake our heads, and snap back to reality as a man calls her name in front of us. MJ, come on! Ned Leeds shouts as we pan back to see that we were in the perspective of MJ and the scene fades to black. Cut to a montage of Spider-Man taking down villains and shutting down rocks and labs all around the city. We see villains such as Stilt Man, Trapster or Pacebot Pete, Kangaroo, Tarantula, Puma, and many others. In this montage, we will also see how far Spider-Man and Black Cat's relationship has gone, from strangers to partners. Suddenly, we cut to a scene taking place in the present day. An explosion happens at a bank, and a beetle flies away, holding bags full of money. There, that explosion should keep him away. Keep who away? Spider-Man says as he swings beside Beetle. The Beetle gets struck and flies even faster. Spider-Man chases after him while the Beetle continues to, ex to escape while launching explosives from the suit. Spider-Man nudges the explosives and webs it up to disarm it. Later, Spider-Man gets caught off guard and gets tackled by the Beetle and falls on a rooftop. As the Beetle was about to get away, Black Cat swoops in and attacks the Beetle. Black Cat begins to slash the Beetle's suit and continues to destroy it. We crash on a rooftop and Black Cat ties him up. You know, I, uh, I got that right. Yeah, sure you do, Spider. Spider-Man grabs the Beetle and threatens him. Look, pal. I don't have enough patience. Where's Tombstone? To early God! I don't know! Please! I'm going to give you another chance. If you give him the right answer, then you'll live. But if you don't, I'm going to drop you off this boat. He's... he... he uh... he's bluffing, right? Um... no. You better believe Mr. Spider-Man here. One... Two... The Beetle gets scared and says that... He'll tell them... 
the Bureau tells them that Tombstone was last seen in one of the rocks and buildings near the docks. Spider-Man and Black Cat tell them they've already shot down all the rocks and labs in the city. The Bureau says that he doesn't know anything else and that's it. Black Cat threatens the Bureau saying if he knows anything else and is lying, then she'll come for him. Police arrive and arrest the Beetle. Police think Black Cat and Spider-Man as they swing away. They land on a rooftop and talk. <sighs> That's the third villain this month from Tombstone. Spider-Man says to Black Cat. Yeah. We need to end this before Tombstone hurts more people. Most especially civilians. <laughs> I don't know, Cat. Seems, seems impossible to beat him. It's already been a year or two or so. And for all we know, it's just getting started. Thus, he's gone quiet. It's been hard to track him down and he's not even at his office. Shush. Calm down, Spider. Black Cat shows her Spider-Man as she removes his mask and kisses him. It's okay. We can stop him. We can find a way to do so. As long as we stay together. Spider-Man smiles and kisses Black Cat. Oh, come on, going to be late. Black Cat says as she grapples away and Spider-Man swings after her. We cut to a scene of Gwen somewhere in the suburbs of California. She exits a cab and proceeds to knock on the door at one of the houses. No one answers but she proceeds to knock on the door again. She hears a noise from the backyard and she sneaks around to look it was coming from. As she peeks from the fence, she sees a woman happily playing with two young boys. It was her mom, Gwen's mom. She was happy and now with a new family. It was all Gwen wanted, to see her mom, her mother, be happy and not alone anymore. Gwen smiles and leaves. Her mom looks at the fences, only to see no one there. We got to a scene of MJ and Harry at the fancy restaurant waiting for Peter and Felicia to arrive. Where are they? I don't know. I, uh, I've, I've tried calling them but they won't pick up. Eventually, Peter and Felicia, wearing fancy clothes, entered the restaurant. You came! Harry exclaims as both he and MJ welcome and approach Peter and Felicia. Felicia and MJ compliment each other's dresses while Peter stares at Harry with distrust in his eyes. We cut to a flashback taking place at the party from the post credit scene of the last movie. Ugh! Everyone looks at Peter shocked. Oh, uh, I, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said it. I'm, I'm Peter by the way. Parker? From the coffee shop? What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's been a while since this job and ever since then I've only been in Boston and stuff. Peter shakes hands with MJ. Felicia and MJ share a conversation about how they work or worked at the same coffee shop. So, I assume you've met everyone, Harry says as he approaches them. Yes, I have and they're quite nice. I see all your friends with them, MJ says as they approach each other and they guess. Peter, Felicia, and Gwen are shocked. Oh, um, sorry. Everyone, I'd like to, um, I'd like you all to meet my girlfriend, MJ. Peter looks at Harry and MJ with bitter sweet in his eyes. The woman she loved was now a stranger with someone else. Oh, Mr. Osborne, no need to be so formal about it. But... I'm glad to meet you all. MJ exclaims as Peter slowly looks at Harry with shock in his eyes. Wait, your name's Osborne? The goblin's laugh echoes through his mind as Peter is frozen and filled with the fear, anger, and more. All emotions into one. That name, Osborne. Peter, Peter, hey, Peter, uh, mm, sorry, what? Peter snaps back to reality as MJ calls out his name. Sorry, 
What was it? How's the food? Oh, um, it's great. Thanks. Peter continues to keep looking at Harry as his anxiety continues to build up. Felicia notices this and holds Peter's hand. Peter looks at Felicia with calmness and comfort in his eyes. They all continue to eat and talk. By the way, how's Gwen? MJ asks Peter and Felicia. Well, we help her get a place to stay and get a job, Peter replies. Right now, though, I was able to help her find her mom, but I haven't heard from her yet. Well, that's kind of you. I know how it feels like to have a broken family and all. It's the least I could do to help her. Suddenly, Harry's phone rings. Um, you guys continue eating. I'll just pick this call up. As Harry goes away to answer the call. Peter's spider sense goes off, warning him of danger. He stands up from his seat and looks around to see where it's coming from. But he sees nothing. Felicia asks him what's wrong, but he replies by just saying nothing. They sit back down, but suddenly, explosions go off and knock everyone to the ground. Peter gets back up and clears the rubble. Peter helps people get out of their debris and tells them to call for help. He finds MJ and Felicia trapped under a large debris and helps them up. <clears throat> Are you guys okay? Peter asks. MJ's unconscious. We need to help her up. Yeah, we should go somewhere safe. Suddenly, a man on a glider flies down to the restaurant and starts laughing maniacally. It was the goblin. The goblin continues to laugh as he flies around and throws pumpkin bobs everywhere. Peter grabs Felicia and MJ and they start running toward the emergency exit as the bombs go off. You need to get MJ to the hospital. Peter says as he and Felicia place her in the ambulance. What about you? Felicia says as she grabs Peter's arm. There are still some people trapped inside. I need to go back. You... You need to stay with MJ and make sure everyone's safe there. Peter says as Felicia kisses him goodbye. Peter runs to an alleyway as the suit morphs around him and Spider-Man swings into action. Spider-Man helps his Fugans trapped inside by lifting the debris and redirecting them to safety. Suddenly, the goblin swoops in with his glider and attacks Spider-Man. You got the colors wrong, pal. It's Green Goblin, not Pumpkin Goblin. Same old jokes, same old Spider-Man. I'm not the Green Goblin. I'm the Hobgoblin. Spider-Man makes fun of Hobgoblin's name, which irritates the goblin. Spider-Man and Hobgoblin continue to fight as the civilians continue to escape. Eventually, the Goblin gets the upper hand and knocks Spider-Man to the ground. The Goblin throws pumpkin bobs and Spider-Man gets alerted by these. Spider-Man uses the tendrils from his suit to save the civilians. Spider-Man successfully saves all of the civilians, all but two. The Goblin throws a sonic bomb at Spider-Man, which irritates the suit. You don't like that? Do you? The goblin says as he activates a high frequency device from his glove. Spider Man continues to fight it, but the suit continues to in pain. I have no intention of killing any of the civilians, but you leave me no choice, Spider Man. The goblin says as he grabs one of the civilians. No, please, don't hurt my mom! A kid from one of the civilians screams as he begs him to not hurt his mother. What are you doing? Goblin! What are you- nah. Spider-Man shouts as he continues to fight off the effects of the Goblin Sonic device. Please, don't hurt my baby. Kill me instead. Just please, don't hurt my boy. Don't hurt my son. The mother begs Goblin. Goblin, no! No! Spider-Man shouts as he gutters up all the strength he has. Well, the mother has spoken, so I got no choice. The goblin says as he stabs the woman behind her back. No! No! 
<sighs> Spider-Man screams as he remembers what happened to Aunt May all those years ago. The goblin throws her body to the ground. Spider-Man lunges the goblin and proceeds to punch him. As Spider-Man, fueled by rage, continues to punch him, the goblin continues to laugh maniacally. Spider-Man just didn't stop, as all that mattered was making him pay. As Spider-Man was about to kill him, a blast of shockwave hits Spider-Man as Shocker enters the room. Sorry I'm late, boss, the Shocker says to the goblin. Goblin stands back up and orders Shocker to explode the place and leave no one behind. They leave the building on a helicopter as the building explodes. Spider Man gets back up and rushes to save the kid. They land in the streets as Spider Man looks up above to see the building on fire. Mr. Spider Man? Is my mom alright? It's our kid. She's in a better place now. Spider-Man says as he embraces the kid. Spider-Man gives the kid to the authorities and tells them to take care of him. Spider-Man walks away and clenches his fists as he swings away. We cut to a scene inside the hospital. Felicia is sitting beside MJ who is on the bed unconscious. Suddenly, a group of their friends from college go into the room and ask how they are doing. Felicia how Felicia hugs them and replies that she's fine, but MJ, not so much. Felicia asks them if they have seen Peter, but they reply saying they haven't. Peter arrives at the hospital, blooded and bruised. He rushes to go find the room where MJ and Felicia are staying at. Doctors and nurses notice him injured and approach him. Sir, sir, excuse me, uh, sir, we, we need to get you some help. Sir, please come with us. Peter just pushes them away and continues to walk. Peter approaches the front desk and asks where he can find Felicia Hardy and MJ. Um, please go to room 1942, sir. Peter bumps into Ned on the way to Felicia and MJ's room. Oh, it's you. We should see you, Pete. Um, come on, they're waiting for you. Ned runs to the room where MJ and Felicia are staying and tells everyone that Peter's here. Felicia stands up from her seat and rushes toward Peter. Felicia hugs Peter with worry and sorrow in her eyes. You're okay. You're okay. Felicia says as she continues to hug Peter. Felicia says as she continues to hug Peter tightly. Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry. Peter says as he smiles and hugs Felicia. Peter and Felicia enter the room. Peter asks how MJ is doing and Felicia says she's, she's fine for now. Suddenly, Harry enters the room. Harry, where have you been? Felicia asks. I ran as um uh, I ran as, as as soon as the ex explosions happened and uncalled for help. Harry replies. Really? So who was it that you talked to on the phone? How are we sure? That you're not the one to blame. How are we sure that you're not the one to blew up the place? How are we sure that you're not the goblin? Huh? Mr. Rossborn? Peter says to Harry with anger and distrust in his eyes. Rage continues to build up to Peter as the voice in his head continues to push him. What are you talking about, Pete? Don't play dumb with me. Innocent people died and got hurt. There was a mother that got killed and a son that lost a mother. Why don't you admit to everyone, everyone here, everyone now, that you're the goblin? Don't trust him. He's lying. He'll hurt you. He'll hurt us. Osborn, Osborn is the goblin. Goblin. Osborn is the goblin. The voice says to Peter in his mind. Look man, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm innocent. So... Why don't we just stay calm and take a deep breath? Harry places his hand on Peter's shoulder, but Peter was mistaken about his anxiety and spider sense. Peter pushes Harry, which knocks Harry to the floor. Everyone looks at Peter with shock and fear in their eyes. 
What am I even doing here? You're all nothing but distractions. Two-faced friends. Peter leaves, but Felicia tries to grab his hand, preventing him from leaving. Peter lets go of her hand and leaves. What's that? I don't know. Felicia then tries to apologize to everyone for, for what Peter did. Harry says that it is fine and that they understand that Peter is going through something. Harry then says to Felicia to, to go after him and make sure he's okay. Felicia tries to chase after Peter, which leads her to the top of the hospital's rooftop, only to see no one there. Peter wakes up in his apartment, exhausted from last night. Peter checks his cell phone for the time as he notices a dozen of missed calls from Felicia. Peter disregards it and thinks about what happened last night. How he got the people he cared about hurt, and how he let some kid lose his mother, just like how he lost his Aunt May. Suddenly, Peter looks at himself in the mirror and stands up from his bed. He approaches the mirror to see his suit underneath his subduant clothes. But it wasn't his fault, right? It was the goblin, and he needs to pay. Peter looks down at his suit, and then at the mirror. Peter backs away from the mirror, and removes his suit. He locks it inside a box in his cabinet. Peter backs off from the cabinet, and sits on his bed. Suddenly, someone knocks on his door. Peter has to put on his shirt and opens the door. Hey, Pete. Gwen. Gwen, how are you? I'm fine. You want to grab some coffee? Um, yeah, sure. Got some time to spare before I head to the Beagle. We got to a scene of Peter and Gwen outside of coffee shop. Peter gets her coffee from the counter and walks outside to her table. Peter gives Gwen her coffee as she sits down and has a conversation. So, how was California? It was nice. The weather's nice and it's bright. Were you able to find your mom? Um, no, I wasn't. Oh, sorry. But. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find her one day, and once you do, you'll see her smiling and happy, Peter says as Gwen smiles at him. Yeah, I hope so. But what about you? Are you sure you're okay? Why? Shouldn't, why, why do you ask? Felicia, um, Felicia, Felicia called me and told me about what happened last night. And I rushed to your place as fast as I could to make sure you were okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Well, if, well, what about what happened with Harry? Gwen says as Peter's phone buzzes, and a message saying their souls are ready pops up. Um, sorry, Gwen. I, I gotta go. I'll see you later. Peter says to Gwen as he leaves. We cut to a scene of Ned in his room. Suddenly, Ned experiences a PTSD attack. We get a glimpse of someone on a glider, flying around the Statue of Liberty. The maniacal laughter continues as it echoes through Ned's mind. Ned's Lola notices the commotion and helps his grandson by giving him his medication. Ned calms down as his Lola embraces him. Ned's Lola comforts him and says that she'll cook something all out to help Ned feel better. We cut to a scene of Spider-Man inside the Baxter Building's lab waiting. Suddenly, Mr. Fantastic enters the lab, holding a bunch of test results. Spider-Man asks him what the results were. Mr. Fantastic reveals that the black suit Spider-Man has wasn't some kind of advanced nanotechnology. Instead, an alien symbiote. Symbiote? What do you mean by, by, by symbiote? You mean the suit's alive? Yeah, it was found somewhere in Mexico. It protects its host from whatever harm it detects. It makes the host stronger, more agile, 
anything to make the host as perfect as it could be. But it has a side effect. The symbiote also enhances the host's aggression, making it dangerous to others around him. Mr. Fantastic looked at Spider-Man and asked him if he had noticed anything like that that happened recently. Peter has flashbacks to when he pushed Harry. Ah, uh, no, not that I know of. Well, if you need some help, you're free to contact me or any member of the Fantastic Four anytime. We got to a scene of Peter at the Daily Bugle. His colleagues like Barry Brandt treat him as he goes to his desk. <sighs> okay, if there's anywhere I could find anything about the Goblin, then it's here. Peter searches Bugle's documents and data to find information about the Goblin. No, no, ah, Goblin spotted. A Goblin creature was spotted fighting Doctor Strange. Nope, it's not it. <sighs> Peter finds nothing about the Goblin and sighs in disbelief. Robbie Robertson then approaches Peter and asks how he was doing. Robbie tells Peter that he's heard about what happened last night from his son. Therefore, he wanted to make sure he was okay. Peter replies saying he's fine and thanks to Robbie for asking him. Suddenly, Jonah exits his office, happily, as he announces that the Dale Bugle was bought by a wealthy businessman that is ready to give the Bugle enough, enough money power to publish trusted and reliable news for all people. Everyone in the Bugle cheers when suddenly, a man in a black suit exits Jameson's office. A man in a black suit by the name of L. Thompson Lincoln. Peter gets shocked to see Tombstone at the bugle. Tombstone thanks everyone for the warm welcome as he also announces to wear their best this coming Saturday for the formal announcement for all the people of New York City to know. Peter leaves the building angry and enraged and goes to his apartment. As Peter opens his door, his landlord approaches him and asks for rent. Rent? Not now, Mr. Ditkovich. What do you mean, not, no not now, Peter? I said rent. You get your rent when you fix this damn door! Peter shouts as he hurries inside his apartment, leaving his landlord shocked and concerned about Peter, because this wasn't how Peter would normally act. Peter walks around his apartment uneasy and yet and uncomfortable. Two of his greatest enemies making a play in his life. Goblin and Tombstone. Peter stops to look at his cabinet. He looks at his red and blue suit, but then disregards it. He looks at the locked box from below. Peter remembers what Mr. Fantastic said to him. But still, it was like it was calling to him. Peter unlocks the box. Regardless of the consequence, he puts on the black suit and leaps out of his window. Same built Spider-Man swings through the skyscrapers of the city that never sleeps. He got to a scene of Tombstone in his office, surrounded by his guards. Spider-Man crashes through the window and disables the hear the cameras. Tombstone presses a button underneath his table as Spider-Man continues to take down his guards. Tombstone stands up from his seat and faces Spider-Man. Took you long enough, Mr. Parker. Tombstone says as Spider-Man approaches him. What's your game, Lincoln? Why buy the bugle? So you could harm more innocent people? That is none of your concern, Spider-Man. The people of this city are my concern, my responsibility. Tombstone headbutts Spider-Man and attacks him. Tombstone pins Spider-Man to the ground with his foot as he leans over to him. Responsibility. This city doesn't need you. It doesn't care if it's your responsibility. Despite everything you've done, eventually, they'll hate you and cast you aside like garbage. Spider-Man tries to break free from Tombstone's grasp, but fails to do so. Now for your concern. There's nothing you can really do about it, but the news? The news is a very powerful tool. You're just one quick move. You're either at the top of the world, or at the bottom with the scraps. Something that'll come in handy in the future. 
especially in the face of powerful enemy. Powerful enemy? Like the goblin? Spider-Man says as Tombstone looks at Spider-Man with confusion in his eyes. How will you know that name? Some of your concern, Mr. Lincoln, Spider-Man breaks free from Tombstone and grabs him with a tendril from his suit. Now, tell me who he is and what you know or I'll break every bone in your body like a twig. Tombstone then says to Spider-Man that he doesn't know anything about him. He's a new player, ready to do whatever it takes to gain power and become the new big man of crime. But of course, Tombstone won't let that happen. It took years for him to get that power right after Wilson Fisk's downfall. And he's not just gonna give it to he's just he's just not going to give it. All to a lunatic of all people. Spider Man tells Tombstone to tell him more, but Tombstone says that that's all he knows. Spider Man doesn't believe Tombstone and throws him into his table. Spider-Man attacks Tombstone as he begs for him to stop, but something feels wrong. Something feels off. Earlier, Tombstone was clearly in control of the situation, but now he's the victim? No, playing the victim. Spider-Man was so focused and enraged at Tombstone that he didn't notice Jameson and two police officers inside the room. Arrest him, officers! Jameson yells as the officers tried to arrest Spider-Man. I told you, the news was a powerful tool. Tombstone whispers to Spider-Man. Spider-Man tries to tell the cops that he was innocent and Tombstone was the bad guy. But the cops don't listen and start to shoot at Spider-Man as he escapes. We cut to flashes of places. From the Washington Monument, to Venice, Italy, to the Statue of Liberty. It was like... There were fragments of a broken memory. Memories of the past that are meant to be forgotten. Suddenly, MJ wakes up in the hospital with Harry beside her. Harry's on a call with someone mentioning something about Oscorp and a shutter. Harry sees that MJ is finally awake. He ends the call and hugs her. Thank God, you're finally awake. Um, are you okay? Do you need anything? Uh, um, I'll go tell the others. No. No, Harry, just stay here. I'm fine. I, uh, I just had a dream. That's all. Spider-Man drops into a rooftop, tired and injured from bullet wounds. Spider-Man hides as the police officers continue to search for him. The officers eventually search elsewhere as Spider-Man breathes a sigh of relief. Why didn't it listen? Why didn't they listen to me? Doesn't matter. We can find the goblin on our own, put on tombstone, without the Byogo, without anyone. Suddenly, someone drops in and approaches Spider-Man. Spider-Man comes out of hiding and prepares to attack, only to see that it was Black Cat. Felicia? Peter? I followed you and without any more words. Peter rushes to Felicia and falls into her arms, tired and injured. Peter wakes up in Felicia's penthouse. He sits on the bed to see his wounds fully healed. He walks to the kitchen to see Felicia preparing breakfast. Peter greets Felicia good morning but she doesn't say anything. Felicia asks how he's doing and Peter replies saying that it's fine. Felicia then says that that's all that matters. We got to a scene of Gwen visiting MJ at the hospital. Harry opens the door for Gwen and Gwen thanks him. Harry then says to keep her company while she, he leaves to get go get some food for the three of them. Gwen sits beside MJ as the two of them talk to each other. MJ, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm fine, thanks for asking. How about you, Gwen? Um... You okay? Did you did you find your mom? Yeah, um I didn't find her. But yeah, I'm okay. MJ looks at Gwen's face and notices that she looks worried. Gwen I know how one tries to hide their emotions, 
been there, done that. You can tell me. It's um, it's Peter. I think something's wrong, and I don't know how I could help him. He's pushing everyone away, and I'm not sure if anyone even knows what he's struggling with. Not Felicia, not Harry, not you, and most especially not me. It's just that I know how it feels like to be alone and trying to show the world that you're okay. Even if you're not. Oh. <laughs> I see. MJ grins, she says, and looks at Gwen. What? Oh, no, 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 um, that's not what I meant. Yeah, sure you don't. No, it's just that... It's just that after my dad died, my life got rough. I became someone who I wasn't. I became bitter, selfish, you know, but it, but then Peter came, and for the first time in a while, someone showed me my word. He's a good friend, and I don't want what happened to me to happen to him. MJ looks at MJ sincerely and holds her hand. MJ tells Gwen to talk to Peter and tell him how she feels. The best way to help him right now is to talk to him and understand him. Whether it may be, whether it may be as a friend or something more. Peter and Felicia eat breakfast in Felicia's penthouse as a news broadcast from the Daily Bugle plays in the background. I can't believe it. Tombstone used the news. I was just there for the truth and I got careless. Peter notices the f that Felicia doesn't seem to mind. Hey, um, I'm sorry. About Harry and how I left. This, this, this goblin. It's something personal for me. Peter, it's okay. I understand. And trust me. You, you, you can tell me and I'll listen. Peter then explains to Felicia how the goblin destroyed his life. How the goblin killed his aunt and how he lost his friends because of him. How he lost his entire life. Peter was then about to tell her about MJ but he stops because he didn't want to hurt Felicia. Felicia then hugs Peter and tells him that she's here for him. I know that this won't help with the pain you feel in losing your aunt and everything but while you were gone, I did my best to get all the information I can get on the attack, and I got a location. Felicia gives Peter a folder containing information about the Shocker's whereabouts. We're meeting my, with my friend tonight. He led us to him, and hopefully, the Shocker tells us where we can find his goblet. We cut to a scene of Gwen leaving the hospital as she bumps into Ned on her way out. Gwen greets Ned, but Ned fails to remember her. Gwen reminds him that she's one of Peter's friends and they first met at the party in Harry's place about a year or so ago. Ned then remembers and Gwen asks him if he's there to visit MJ. Ned replies that he's actually not there for that but he might go and visit her later. Gwen then asks what was he there for but Ned doesn't answer after his head suddenly hurts. Ned excuses himself and goes. As Gwen leaves, as Gwen leaves the hospital. Ned then proceeds to go to the comfort room and looks at himself in the mirror. As this happens, we cut to a scene with Ned's Lola having a conversation with that Ned's doctor. The doctor states that Ned's condition is worsening. The medications aren't enough anymore to combat Ned's PTSD. As this continues to happen, the, go the goblin's maniacal laughter continues to echo inside Ned's mind. We cut to a scene of Spider-Man and Black Cat waiting for someone on top of a rooftop. So, where's this friend of yours? Relax, we're waiting for him. We cut to a scene of, Sp of someone driving his car into an alleyway as he talks to someone on the phone. Yeah, I know, don't worry. 
I'll make it this time. I promise. Suddenly, someone drops in nearby, which alerts the man in the car. Look, nephew. I'm gonna have to call you back. He just popped up. Aaron Davis steps out of the car and puts in the rest of his suit. Prowler activates his gloves and prepares to attack. Suddenly, Black Cat drops in and Prowler puts his guard down. Oh, sorry. It was just you. Sorry about that. No problem. Anyways, I'd like you to meet my partner, Spider Man. Spider Man, Prowler. Black Cat says as Spider Man drops in. We've met before, but due to other circumstances, I hope this will make a peace offering of sorts. So, Chalker, right this way. Oh, and by the way, you all better keep up. The Prowler says as he things away, and we have a chase sequence of Spider-Man, Black Cat, and the Prowler. We arrive at the parking garage. Spider-Man, the Prowler, and Black Cat arrive. Spider-Man asks the Prowler where the Shocker was when suddenly, the Shocker and some masked men step out of the shadows and start shooting. Spider-Man pushes Black Cat out of the way as they hide behind the van as the gunshots continue. You betrayed us! Sorry guys, it's all business. Plus, I did bring it to him just like you said, so it still counts. The Shocker blasts the van Spider-Man and Black Cat are hiding and flips it over. Spider-Man gathers Spider-Man guards Black Cat in the suit and creates a shield to protect him from the bullets. Spider-Man and Black Cat then attack the armed men. Afterward, Spider-Man goes after the Prowler and Black Cat attacks the Shocker. Spider-Man destroys the Prowler's gear and webs him up. Suddenly, the Shocker blasts Spider-Man and Black Cat. Spider-Man in the suit writhes in pain from the blast. The, the Shocker then throws an explosive, which collapses the ceiling onto Spider-Man. The blast also throws Black Cat off the edge and breaks the Black Cat's gear, which prevents her from using her grapnel gun. The Shocker then leaves and con contacts the Goblin, saying that the job's done, as he believes that Spider-Man has died. A chopper drops by and the Shocker gets in it. Suddenly, Spider-Man rises from the debris in rage. Spider-Man prepares to attack the Shocker. But then Black Cat calls to him for help, but she struggles to hold on from the ledge. Spider-Man is presented with a choice, either to save Black Cat and let the Shocker get away, or take down the Shocker, then and there. Peter thinks to himself to save Black Cat, but then, the voice inside his mind pushes him to go after the Shocker. As Black Cat was about to fall, Spider-Man instead goes after the Shocker, which shocks Black Cat and hurts her feelings. Spider-Man activates his tendrils as he takes down the Shocker and the rest of the Chopper. The Chopper crashes and the, sh and the Shocker climbs out to the streets, desperate for help. Spider-Man then emerges from the fire and grabs the Shocker with the tendril from his suit. Spider-Man slumps Shocker to the ground and starts beating him up. Spider-Man asks Shocker where's the goblin, but the Shocker tells him that he doesn't know. Spider-Man doesn't believe him and continues to beat him up. Suddenly, the Shocker activates his gloves again, but on maximum power, which makes Spider-Man and the suit right in pain. The symbiote detaches from Spider-Man and slithers away. Black Cat then swoops in and destroys the Shocker's gloves. Hey, um, hey, uh, uh thanks. Thanks. Spider-Man says to Black Hat, but she doesn't mind it and leaves. Spider-Man chases after Black Hat and they talk on top of a rooftop. Hey, is there something wrong? Something wrong? Why don't you ask yourself, Peter? I'm sorry for... Whatever I did, you made me embarrassed in front of our friend at the hospital after you lashed out on Harry. I tried to call you, but you didn't pick up. You made me so worried that night that I wasn't able to sleep and eat properly. I even had to contact everyone if, if they knew where you were. I even had to contact Gwen 
even if I knew she was facing her problem with her mom. I tried and I tried and I did my best just to help you with whatever is this stuff with the goblin. And I forgive you and understand you, Peter. But when I needed you the most, and I was about to fall to my death, why didn't you go? Why didn't you choose to save me? If I was to be the one to make the choice of going after the bad guy or saving you, I would have saved you on any day of the week. Anytime. I would have chosen you. I would have chosen you. Spider-Man is left speechless. But she doesn't know what to say. But after all that, Peter, I still love you. But I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Black Cat says as she leaves Peter. We cut to a scene taking place the next day. Peter is outside the door of his apartment trying to call Felicia. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Uh, um, hey, hey Felicia. It's Peter again. I don't know if, uh, know if you can hear this, but I wanted to say I'm sorry for everything. Please, can we talk? I'm sorry, and I love you. Peter continues to walk around outside his apartment trying to call Felicia when he bumps into his landlord. You're up early, Peter. Uh, yeah. Look, Mr. Ditkovich, I'm sorry for what I said the other day. I'm sorry I yelled and... Uh, nonsense, Parker. I understand. I know that you're going through a tough time right now. Plus, no need to worry about the rent anymore. Your girlfriend... Uh, what is your name again? Uh... Yeah, Felicia? Yeah. I uh, already paid for your rent, so... Oh. Um, thanks. Well, my advice, kid? You better go take a walk outside to clear your mind. Trust me, it'll help. Peter walks around Central Park as he continues to try and call Felicia. Hey, it's Peter again. Again, uh, I wanted to talk, um, I want to thank you for paying my rent, uh, I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. And I'm sorry for everything. Please, talk to me. I don't want to lose you too. I love you. The voice message ends as the phone alerts by Peter that he sent the maximum amount of voice messages. Peter sits down on a bench, realizing all the mistakes he's done. But suddenly, a man approaches Peter and asks if he could sit beside him. Peter looks up to see Flash Thompson. Flash sits beside Peter and they talk. Oh, Flash, I'm sorry for how I acted the other day at the hospital. I didn't mean to hurt Harry or offend you guys. No problem. I know exactly what you're going through. You know, I used to hurt anyone that gets in my way back in high school. I was so angry at the world because, yeah, I'm rich, but not exactly the perfect family. I used to bully this kid whose name I can't remember. I think it was... Palmer or something, Paul. Paul. I don't know. I can't remember exactly, but I just no. But you know what? I hated myself for it. But then I realized that hate isn't the way. Hating others and hating yourself all lead to nothing but more pain. I learned that from Spider-Man. No, the world may hate him, but 
she taught me that I should keep on going. And I think, I think you should too, Peter. Peter smiles and thinks Flash. You're a big fan of Spider-Man, huh? Yeah, it's the best. Well, thanks Flash. Anytime, but uh, I gotta go. And uh, I got something to do about joining the army and stuff. But uh, you should go to the hospital. I'm sure that they'd understand you plus MJ's about to be discharged, so yeah. Oh. Oh, thanks. And good luck. Peter arrives at the hospital and rushes in to go see MJ and how she's doing. As he was about to enter the room, he bumps into Harry. Peter apologizes to Harry and explains everything to him and how life's been tough lately. Harry doesn't seem to mind at first but then hugs Peter. <laughs> no worries bro, I forgive you. And I know you didn't mean to do that and with all your anxiety and stuff. But hey, come on in, they're inside. Peter goes inside and gets greeted by everyone. Peter then apologized to everyone but they all forgive him. Later as the group was about to leave, Randy invites them to go to the party by the bugle. Harry and MJ say they can't go because MJ's got a rest for her to fully recover. Randy then asks Peter if he's coming with him, being an employee of the bugle and all, but Peter replies that he forgot about it, but he'll try to show up. Randy then asks Gwen if she'll come with them, but she says that she won't. The group leaves as Peter, Gwen, and MJ, Harry, and Harry remain. As the group enters the car, Ned suddenly starts to have another PTSD attack. Randy Robertson notices this and asks if he was okay. Ned then says that he's alright and they better go to a party before they're late. The car leaves as we transition back inside the hospital. Peter, Harry, Gwen, and MJ have conversation. This conversation is when MJ suddenly notices Gwen glancing at Peter. MJ MJ smiles and Gwen notices this, then stops glancing at Peter. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, I gotta leave. Wait, already? Yeah, I gotta go home and, um, what are my plans? Gwen says her goodbyes and as she was about to leave, Peter goes after her and holds her hand. Gwen, wait. Be careful. I know. You too. Gwen smiles as she says so and leaves. We cut into a scene at the vehicle party. Everyone is wearing formal suits and dresses. We also see Jameson welcoming the guests inside. Randy, Ned, and the rest of their group go inside. They sit at the table as the program begins. The announcer welcomes everyone to the formal announcement of, of the bugle being bought by one of New York City's biggest benefactors. But before she does, but before she does so, she first calls the editor in chief of the bugle, J. Jonas Jameson. Jameson then comes up to the, to the stage to have a speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure being here to announce to you all this wonderful news. The Daily Bugle has been a source of truthful trusted news made by the people for quite some time now that is why it's been an honor to present to you this benefactor new york city i present to you mr al thompson lincoln the crowd claps their hands and cheers stumstone makes his speech Bruno goes back to his table and takes his seat alongside his son and ned excuses himself from his friends to go to the bathroom Jonah then talks to his son John, and how he tells him that he's bored. Jonah then tells John to just wait for a little bit longer, so that they could go home and rest later. Ned then has another PTSD attack in the bathroom, and the goblin's maniacal laughter echoes through his mind as he hits his head, begging for the noise to stop. As Tombstone was about to finish his speech, multiple beepings happen and Pumpkin bombs explode around the ballroom. The guests panic and people scream as masked men enter the room and open fire. 
demanding to give them L. Thompson Lincoln, or else they will die. We cut into a scene of Peter asleep on the hospital desk, inside the room. He gets woken up by Harry who tells him that he needs to go fix some paperwork first, before MJ can get discharged. Peter nods as Harry exits the room. Peter looks around the room and then at MJ. Peter observes MJ as he remembers a memory from the past. Suddenly, MJ wakes up and notices Peter. Hey, you alright? Oh, um, yeah, sorry. Kind of stared off into the space there. Do you need something? Some water? Oh, no, I'm fine. Peter and MJ then both stay silent. MJ then asks Peter what was he thinking of. Peter replies that it's just thinking about a memory with an old friend. MJ asks, how was it? Peter then tells her that imagine she was on a bridge and there was just the two of them there. There's just silence in the space but it all feels cool. It's like the whole world didn't matter because the person you were with was your world. MJ suddenly looks at Peter with a hint of remembrance from the past. But then, the tension breaks off. Anyways, I know I've, I've, um, uh, I've already said it but I'm sorry. With everything. There's no need to push yourself in this, Peter. I, uh, we... Forgive you. It's okay. It both of me and Harry. Peter smiles as MJ then asks Peter for a glass of water. Peter then gives MJ some water, but the news broadcast from the television plays, which shows a big fire happening at the bottom part of the bugle. MJ then says that Ned and the others are there, but as she looks to her side, Peter is nowhere to be seen. Peter runs to the rooftop and changes his clothes. Peter knows that Spider-Man might get more people hurt, but still, it's his responsibility. We got into a scene at the ballroom. People continue to panic as the masked men get hostages. They try to find Tombstone. One of those hostages is John Jameson, Jonah's son. Jonah begs the masked men to take him instead. But they refuse and only agree to let the son go if he shows them where Tombstone is. Jonah tells them that he doesn't know but the masked men don't believe him. They give him one last warning as they begin to count the tree. As they were about to pull the trigger, Spider-Man drops it and webs the masked men's guns away from the hostage. As they were about to pull the trigger, Spider-Man drops it and webs the masked man's gun away from the hostages. Spider-Man attacks the masked man as he saves his hostages. But one masked man remained and tried to shoot Jameson's son. Thankfully, Spider-Man stops him and saves Jameson's son. Spider-Man then gives John to his father and John is left speechless. Spider-Man, the man he thought was a menace, saved his son. The only thing that brought joy in his life. Spider Man then clears the debris from the door and helps his opponents evacuate. Police officers suddenly show up and try to arrest Spider Man, but Jonah stops them and says to them that he's not the bad guy. The police officers then help Spider Man clear some debris and evacuate the civilians out of danger. Eventually, the last of the civilians are finally evacuated. Randy Robertson and the rest of Peter's friends go to Spider-Man and tell them that their friend Ned is missing. Spider-Man then tells them to go with the officers to get to safety as he remains to search for Ned and any other remaining civilians. As Spider-Man continues to search for the remaining civilians, he also notices Tombstone helping him. Why remain in help? My party, my mess. Spider-Man and Tombstone continue to search for remaining civilians, but suddenly, a goblin flies through and attacks Tombstone. Spider-Man dodges out of the way, but tries to have the goblin. The Tombstone tries to fight the goblin, but fails. 
Spiderman tries the goblin which lets Tombstone go. I thought you were dead. You thought wrong. Goblin becomes angry by what Spider-Man did and they fight. Tombstone calls toward the exit and he escapes in the chopper. The Goblin tries to chase after him with his glider but Spider-Man webs him to stay and they continue to fight. The Goblin was quick and deadly as he continues to throw pumpkin bobs at Spider-Man. Spider-Man continues to dodge as fast as he can and he manages to explode one at the Goblin which knocks the Goblin off his glider but also with Spider-Man more battle damage. No more games, Goblin. This ends now. Spider-Man shouts as the Goblin just continues to laugh and annoy Spider-Man. Spider-Man attacks the Goblin and gets him up. The Goblin then suddenly tries to fight back, but fails to do so. The Goblin then uses his Goblin Blast, which blasts Spider-Man into a debris. Spider-Man gets back up as the Goblin crawls toward the exit. Spider-Man grabs the Goblin and starts to punch him again, and again, and again. Peter, Peter, please, stop. Spider-Man stops punching the Goblin as he hears his name. No, 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 not again. The last time that the Goblin knew who I was, he... No, never again. Peter, please stop. The goblin begs as he tries to remove his mask. Spider-Man backs off as he stumbles upon the goblin glider. Peter, please, no more. It's, it's me. It's, it's me, please stop. Spider-Man doesn't listen as he picks up the goblin glider. No, never again. Spider-Man says as he walks toward the goblin. Spider-Man kicks the goblin into his back as the goblin crawls and begs for mercy. Peter, please, it's me, please stop. The goblin begs as he tries to remove his mask. But Spider-Man didn't listen. Spider-Man grips the glider with such anger and rage that it bent. Spider-Man strikes the goblin down with the blade from his glider into his chest. The goblin stops speaking as he removes his mask to see the face of Ned Leeds, Peter's old best friend. Peter, thank you for being my friend. Ned says as he bleeds out and dies at the hands of Peter Parker, Spider-Man. MJ and Harry enter Harry's penthouse for MJ to put her cover in rest. They sit on the sofa as MJ tells Harry to turn on the television to see the news about the bugle party. MJ and Harry watch the news broadcast of the aftermath of the tragedy. From this, they learn that there was one casualty who has not yet been identified. MJ and Harry then try to call their friends but they wouldn't answer. We then cut into a scene of Gwen waking up from MJ's call. Gwen picks up the phone and talks to MJ. Gwen, you alright? Yeah, I I'm fine. What's wrong? It's Randy and the others. There was an explosion at the party and... Without any more words, Gwen hangs up and puts it in her shoes and coat. She runs to go to Peter's apartment and hires up to open the door. Only to see. But no one there. Gwen breathes heavily for a moment as she closes the door, and a loud thud is heard suddenly at Peter's window. Gwen opens the door to see Peter in his suit, bleeding out. Peter notices Gwen and tries to walk toward her, but he collapses on the floor as Gwen hurries and catches him. Peter, Peter, what's wrong? What's wrong? What happened to you? What are you wearing? Why? Gwen says as she holds Peter in her arms. Peter sobs into her arms as Gwen tries to calm Peter down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry. Peter says as we see all of the people that Peter's hurt. MJ and Harry 
watching the news. Randy Robertson and the rest of their friends are injured. Felicia is alone on top of a skyscraper. Jonah in the sun. Tombstone, his office. Looking at the city triumphantly. And Ned. Ned leaves. Who died at the hands of Spider-Man. Peter cries into Ben's arms. She continues to assure him that everything's okay, that everything's fine, as we fade to black. The markings on your surface, your speckled face, flood crystals hang from your ears. We cut to a scene of a man in a green suit, looking at his desk from the shadows. Some masked men arrive at some alleyway and capture the symbiote inside some kind of advanced canister. The masked men inform the man that they have captured the specimen. The man says to bring it back to the facility. The man looks at the screen, full of crime bosses and vigilantes all throughout New York City, and says, Now... Now the fun begins, as we fade to black. We got to a scene of Aaron Davis talking to someone on the phone. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't show up even though I promised. I needed to do some things. Aaron says as he sits on his desk and looks at his prowler gloves. Well, tell you what, nephew. I'll come by and visit you, and we can finish that track you've been working on. Right? Thomas. I gotta go. See you, Miles. And that concludes my period for the MCU Spider-Man 5. I know it's not perfect in terms of editing and writing, but I did my best to maintain the story and tone that was left off from No Way Home. And you know, I continued the story from my last period of Spider-Man 4. Before we end this video, I would like to thank Troy Boyo 17, Lewis Films, and Arachnofoller for inspiring me to make a period of my own. Their videos are great and I would highly appreciate it if you give them love and support. I hope you liked this video and consider subscribing if you like more videos like this. This was the Panic Geek, and I'll see you on my pre-write for MCU Spider-Man 6. Have a nice day.